Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Forza Dave and welcome today to another OBS tutorial. This is for OBS 21.0.1 on Windows and this is going to be basically showing you guys the best recording settings for doing local recordings so you can record your games with uh, high FPS, not much lag and very good quality as well, all for free. It's absolutely brilliant this software, I absolutely love it. I've done a couple of these tutorials before and you guys do seem to like them, uh, so I thought I'd do an updated one now that we're coming towards the end of March as of the time of recording this video in 2018, uh, just to make sure that you're up to date with everything. So, if you guys don't have OBS Studio, then you can come to this website, which is uh, just tab in OBS into Google, you'll find your way to this website. OBS stands for Open Broadcast Software. It is is, as it says here, a free open source software for video recording and live streaming. So this is what basically everyone is using right now for specifically live streaming, uh, but a lot of people do it for video recording as well, including myself on YouTube and of course live streaming on Twitch. From here, select what uh, system you're running on. Of course, I am running on Windows. You simply select this and a download will start, which you'll see at the bottom. Uh, I'd already downloaded one here, but uh, it's just an exe file. You can just open it up, get it running, and everything will be great. So we can just cancel that because I do already have this installed, as you can see here. Now, the first thing you want to do when you've downloaded the software is to open your start menu, and you're going to type in OBS. And what you'll see is that you, get, you actually have two uh, versions of OBS. You have a 64-bit version and a 32-bit version. Now, for most people, you should be running a 64-bit system. You can check this by, uh, if you just right-click on either my computer or this PC, uh, if you're on Windows 10, um, you can just go to here, go to properties, uh, and you can see here I'm running on a 64-bit operating system. Now this means that I'm going to be running with a 64-bit version of OBS. If you have a 32-bit version, then you're going to use the 32-bit version. Although if you're running a 32-bit version, you're probably going to struggle to record uh, because it's not as good. For, it, doesn't, it doesn't allow as much RAM and you probably have a low spec PC. Most of you will have 64-bit versions. What you're going to do, so if I go back and we type in OBS again, and first thing actually is to right-click this and go to Open File Location. In here, then right click the application that's been selected, go to properties, go to compatibility and do these two things. First of all, run this program in compatibility mode for Windows 7 and secondly, run this program as an administrator. The reason I do these two things is that some games I have trouble uh, recording the game because it keeps uh, it's essentially a black screen here. Uh, so I put my game in and then it just doesn't seem to record. And I've had a lot of people in the comments say this as well. Like, oh, my video just has a black screen. If it does that, then that's the fix. You just need to make sure that mainly it's running as an admin, but the Windows 7 compatibility thing is another fix as well. And it should mean that any game that you try and record will record properly. Cool. Now we're actually in the software. We've, we've got all the other stuff out of the way with. You will have in this software a scene and you won't actually have a source to start off with, so I will remove that. But uh, you'll have a scene here, which you can rename to whatever you want. I'm just going to rename it to... Uh, let's rename it to Tutorial Scene. If I can type. There we go. And then for sources, uh, we will go to Add. And for most games, we're going to go Game Capture. Uh, I can just name it Game Capture. That's fine. And then what I will usually do is I'll go to capture specific window and then select the window here. And of course, you need to have the game open and then you just select it here. I'll show you that in a bit when we've set up all the other settings. But in here, everything should be set up correctly. Make sure you've got the use anti-cheat compatibility hook on. Uh, this just means that if you have any bits of uh, software which seem to detect OBS as a cheating kind of, so of software, I, I know... PUBG did this for a little bit. Um, if you have this on, then it will just make sure that it doesn't have any issues. So everything here should be fine. Click OK. And that's our scene set up. Now, we don't actually have a game here because we haven't added it in yet, but we will do that soon. Next thing we're going to do is open up the settings and get into kind of the meat of the tutorial, really. In general, there is not actually much we need to do here. There's a lot of different settings, but you don't really need to play around with them. Main thing is you can set your theme. There are some pretty cool ones here, but I use dark. Uh, it's the cleanest one for me. Uh, automatically check for updates on startup is good as well. Uh, the software now actually updates on its own and you can just click here and update it. You used to have to go on the website and download a new version from there and it was a bit of a pain. So this is a really nice feature. Stream, I'm not covering streaming today so we don't need to worry about that. Output. Now, when you come into output to start off with, if you've got a new uh, just software just downloaded, you will be in this simple mode. This is no good. This doesn't give us the... Uh, 
the in enough of uh, customization that we want to actually use. So come in here into advanced and then move to recording. Firstly, you're going to set your recording path and make sure obviously your type is on standard as well. But make sure you set your recording path to a hard drive. So this is my uh, recordings. And I have it on, if I go back to my PC, you'll see I have three hard drives. So I actually have my uh, local disk C, which was where my OS is on. This is an SSD. Then I have local disk E is actually technically really my second one. That's where I have all my games, a lot of my main files. That's why it's so full up. And then D is specifically for recordings and videos. Now, this is actually a pretty fast hard drive. It's not an SSD, but it is pretty damn fast. So, uh, yeah, I record straight into here. And having a faster hard drive, it means that you're not going to have any issues recording. If your hard drive's too slow or you've got a really old hard drive, you might suffer issues when recording because the, the hard drive basically can't keep up. If you're recording really big file sizes, you're writing uh, bigger file sizes than the, 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 the hard drive's write speed can keep up with, which isn't good. So make sure you have a decently decent speed hard drive and ideally a separate hard drive to your OS or wherever the software is running from. That will give you the best performance in that regard. So I'm just going to go in here, go into my recordings folder, bam, selected. There it is, D slash recordings. Great. Recording format, put this on MP4. Uh, if for some reason MP4 doesn't work for you, which there's almost no reason why it, it shouldn't work for you, uh, then try MKV. But MP4 works really well for me. It allows me to edit in Premiere Pro. It will also allow you to edit in Sony Vegas if that's what you edit in. So pick whichever one suits you best. Audio tracks is how many audio tracks you want. For most people who are doing just like gameplays, you might just have one audio track. Uh, me, I use three audio tracks. So I have one audio track for my gameplay audio, one audio track for my mic audio, and then one audio track for my Discord audio for when I'm playing with friends. Um, a lot of people might just use two, in which case you'll have one for your mic and then one for your gameplay and your Discord. However, I have a way to split all of it. And if you guys want a tutorial on that, then leave a link, uh, leave a comment below and I'll give you a tutorial on that as well. Encoder, uh, I'm going to set this to NVENC H264. Now, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card uh, that's at all recent, then you should have this as an option. And this allows your GPU to do the encoding, uh, which is really, really efficient because your GPU is, is built for that kind of thing. If you, do, if you don't have this and use X264, I'm not going to cover it today, uh, but this will eat up a lot more of your CPU power. And for a lot of lower spec PCs, you're going to have a lot of trouble recording. So if you have access to this or AMD's equivalent, I can't remember the name of it, but there'll be another thing here, or something like QuickSync, just try one of them. It will be better. And you'll be able to do very similar settings to how I set this up. So either NVENC, the AMD version or Intel QuickSync. One of those three will be good for you. Rescale output, we do not want to do here. Uh, if you want to turn down the scaling, we can do that later, but I record at 1080p, which is my monitor's resolution, so that's all good for me. Nothing in the custom MUXA settings. And then here we have our encoding settings. So the rate control, there's a couple of different things you can do here. I most recently have been using CBR and setting the bit rate to 50,000. CBR simply stands for constant bit rate. It basically says, I want the recording to be this bit rate the whole way through. Uh, this means I have consistent file sizes uh, because the bit rate is always 50k, no matter what I'm recording. This means that sometimes uh, a file can be bigger than it needs to be. Say I'm recording a really simple game that doesn't have too many crazy graphics, uh, then maybe the bit rate's a bit wasted. Uh, but it just means I have consistent file sizes, consistent files overall, and 50,000 is what something like NVIDIA Shadowplay uses, uh, which means that I'm equaling that quality at least. If you wanted to be really picky and wanted to have better quality, you can try bumping this up maybe to 60,000, maybe higher, maybe 80,000, but it's not really necessary when you're uploading to YouTube, and YouTube's eventually going to render it all and kind of compress it all down anyway, so 50,000 works well for me. Keyframe interval, leave this as zero, which is auto. For preset, uh, recently I've been flicking between default and high quality. I don't see a huge amount of difference either in the performance or the quality. So I've been keeping on high quality just for maybe that little bit of quality that I'm not specifically seeing with my eyes, but it's there if that makes sense. So I'd recommend trying high quality. If you have any issues, try turning it down to default. For profile, because we're recording high definition, we want to have this on high. Uh, you can look up online what this profile thing means. It's really hard to explain, but you can switch between high and main. Similar to this preset setting, it doesn't seem to make much difference, but for high definition recordings, you should be using high. And also when I do my rendering, I render with a high profile. So having consistency throughout is good for me. Next is the level. Just leave this on auto. 
I don't use two-pass encoding because I don't understand how two-pass encoding is meant to work when you're recording. So I just don't use it. And then GPU, this is just whichever GPU is selected. I only have one GPU, so it says GPU zero. Uh, and then B frames two, which are just the default options. And all these settings should give you very good quality. Next is audio. Just set all the tracks to 320. Audio quality is key to videos. In some place, in some ways, I find audio quality to be even better than video quality. A, a video can look really, really good and your audio can sound awful and it completely puts me off the video. Whereas if the video is a bit pixely or something, as long as it's not too bad, but you have nice, good sound, maybe some nice music in the background, it, it makes the video a lot better. So make sure you've got all of the tracks turned up to 320, even tracks that you're not using. You never know, you might use it at one point and this way they're already set. And then replay buffer we're not using. So that's everything in output. That's a pretty big section. But next is another audio section. And this is where we're setting our sample rate as well as our devices. Sample rate is an important one. We have the options of 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. Now we want to keep consistency. So when I right click down here on my, uh, my, my audio settings on Windows and go to recording devices and then go on my microphone, which is my producer USB microphone. It's what I'm speaking into right now for you guys. I'm going to right click it, go to properties, go to advanced and you'll see here I've got the default format set as one channel 16 bit 48,000 kilohertz so therefore I'm selecting 48 kilohertz sorry that was 48,000 hertz so this is 48 kilohertz my bad um if I had this set at 44.1 kilohertz this could lead to some desync issues because we're recording at different sample different sample rates to get the best quality and no desync make sure you've got it the same if you've got this set at 44.1 you set this as 44.1 great all understood channels i set to stereo and then the desktop audio device is whatever your audio is coming through into your speakers so you could set this as just something like speakers or default usually works however i use this software called voice meter which is used to split the audio once again if you want a tutorial for that leave a comment below this desktop audio 2 is my um discord audio sorry i completely forgot what that's called and then my microphone Three different tracks, three different devices. Brilliant. Uh, next is video. I have this at 1080p on the base and the scaled. If you do want to downscale to something like 720p, do it here. Output scaled resolution. You can set it to 128 by 720, that's 720p. However, I record at 1080p. For the downscale filter, I found that bicubic is the best. I'm not downscaling at the moment, so it literally makes no difference to me. But if you are going to downscale, I found that bicubic is actually better than Lanxos, even though Lanxos says it has more samples. It just seems to be the best, bicubic. It looks the best. And then FPS values. I like to record my videos at 60 FPS. And honestly, if you can, you should, because 60 FPS looks absolutely great on YouTube. And I could never go back now. Hotkeys, this is where you can set your hotkeys for starting and stopping recording. I don't actually use them, but if you're doing streams, then hotkeys are obviously very useful, so you can use them there. And then in advanced, we've got a couple of things which are actually quite useful here. This is typically an area where people just avoid because it's like, ooh, advanced, I don't want to play with it. But we're going to set the process priority actually to high. Now, the reason I do this is it's personal preference. For example, say I start up Far Cry 5, a new game that I've just got, and I want to record it. Far Cry 5, it, I start it up and without anything else running on my PC, it runs at 120 FPS. Let's just say that, that number. When I then start OBS, OBS is going to start using some resources. And when you start recording, it's going to use even more resources to run. Your, PU, your CPU then basically decides how to split the usage between programs. Now, if this was set at normal, it would be equaling the, the game. So... What might happen is that the game might use more, end up using kind of more resources than it needs to run at a decent frame rate, and your recording might become choppy at um, positions where your CPU becomes under load uh, because this is because it's not getting enough CPU power to run. If we turn this to high, OBS now becomes the most prioritized program to use CPU. So in those situations where maybe the CPU becomes stressed. The game frame rate might drop a bit. Maybe it drops from 120 down to 80, which is still a very playable frame rate. And we're recording at 60 FPS, so it really won't be that noticeable if at all in the recording. But what will happen is no nothing will happen to the recording because we've got enough CPU power that say, okay, we, we need to decide where we're going to give our CPU power to. Okay, we're going to give it to OBS. So 
I would happily have my game quality or performance drop a bit to ensure that the recording stays good because I've had so many times in the past where the recording just fails or something and looks awful and starts to become choppy and you can't fix that. That when it's recorded like that, it's done and you bet that footage becomes useless. So set the prices priority to high and give it a shot. I know it's a long explanation, so hopefully that makes sense. In the video settings, we are going to have the YUV color space set at 709 and the YUV color range set at partial. And then these two settings, the render and the color format, leave them as they are. These color settings are the best ones I've found. I found that full looks too dark, I think, and 601 looks more washed out. These two settings mean give the most accurate colors. I'm not going to say they look the best. They look the most accurate. Basically, if I'm playing the game and then I'm watching my recording, it looks almost the same. And that's what we're aiming for. That's all the settings, guys. I know that's a fairly long explanation and probably longer than some of the other videos I've done, but I want to make sure that you guys know the settings properly. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a game loaded up and I'm going to show you guys how to get it in here so you can actually start recording. Okay guys, so here we are. We've opened up a game. This game is Dungreed, a little roguelike game which I've been playing recently, which is a lot of fun. And uh, it's a good one because I can basically put it in windowed mode and it still looks pretty good because it's a pixely kind of game. And I can show you guys it running in real time with OBS. So what we're going to do is go into OBS I'm going to get rid of this for now so I can actually add it again. Uh, as I said, we add game capture, drag it in, capture specific window, window, done greed. Okay. And there we go. There's done greed. Uh, now, the resolution of this at the moment is, if we go in, it's 1024 by 768. So that's the space that this is taking up. This is a canvas, which is 1080p large. So for a game like this, maybe if I was recording like this, we can drag it around. We can, what I'd do is I'd literally you can just freeform it like that. And then to get it central, I'd right click. I'd go to transform and I'd do, maybe fit to screen. There, there we go. We could also do stretch to screen, I believe which would stretch it, which isn't as nice. Can I put it back? Yeah, we can. So there we go. There is Dungree. Now you could have some extra things in the background. You could do add, um, can you do a solid color? You could make like a solid color and add it as an image and have that in the background so we don't have these black bars. But essentially, there's the game running. Now for the audio, you'll have your different audio tracks here. So I've named them as PC sounds, Discord and microphone. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click the little cog wheel here and go to advanced audio properties. In here, you have your three different tracks and the main thing you wanna set is the tracks they're on. So my microphone is on track one only, my PC sounds are on track two only, and my Discord audio is on track three only. So you can tick and untick whichever tracks you want. Just make sure that you've got your tracks for your audio split and then set your volume as you please. I have them all on 100% because I do the audio elsewhere, basically. And that's essentially it all done. I mean, now what you do is you'd literally click start recording. I'm not going to now just because I don't want to actually start recording on this at the moment. But if you can see this in the background, if I just move this over here and we literally start playing, you can see that literally you've got the game on the left and then you've got the game recording on the right. And there you go. It's that easy. And you will get really, really good quality out of this. There we go. Easy peasy. Let's close the game out. If you ever lose your game, literally, it just disappears from there. But you can still see in here, if I go properties, it's still selected as done greed, even though the game's closed, which means if I open up done greed again, which I can't select because I've actually unselected it, uh, then it will start recording again. And it means if you have any, if you have any issues like alt having out your game or the game crashes, it doesn't matter. The recording still goes. It doesn't stop. You could literally go here and you could go add display capture and you could add literally this display and get this effect like it's just a constant recording i can delete that it would still be recording i could delete that it's still recording it's great there we go guys that is this tutorial done i hope you found it really informative i wanted to cover as many things as possible in this one because uh, every time i record these i always feel like i don't put in enough information some of you might think that this is too long but hopefully if you've sat through it you'll now have a really good understanding of how obs works and why these settings are actually so good as I said, if you've enjoyed, smash that like button, leave a comment below, and subscribe 
for more awesome videos coming very soon. I'm going to be grinding them out over the next uh, couple of months or so, hopefully. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.